stretch here is much shorter, and so we're gonna we're putting between three and four animals this section. Today we we released uh, 13 eastern hellbenders into the Little Buffalo River. Oh, I feel really lucky. Today I was able to release one, which was really exciting. This is the first actual release of zoo raised animals that's occurred in the state. As of today, you've got TWRA, Tennessee State University, and the Nashville Zoo. And the Nashville Zoo and, and some other researchers years ago started collecting eggs from a few streams here in Middle Tennessee. Hellbenders are amphibians. They are a fully aquatic salamander. Despite the hellbender, the eastern hellbender not being listed as endangered under the Endangered Species Act, we designated it at the state level as endangered because there's a number of populations throughout East Tennessee that are in decline or in areas that have been extirpated, so they no longer occur there. These animals have been raised in captivity. Eggs were collected in, I think, 2014, around that time, by the Nashville Zoo, by Sherry Doro Reinch and Dale McGinnity. We only collected for the purpose of re-releasing. So um, a lot of states are doing the head starting because something's happening just with the, the larva where they're not finding middle middle age class animals. So um, yeah, it was just, we finally all got together and we're like, this is important, we need to do this. Populations in East Tennessee from the Hiawassee uh, up north in the upper parts of East Tennessee, th those those populations are doing quite well. Uh, they got different age or size classes, so so you see recruitment. So the reproduction is taking place and here in Middle Tennessee. That's not the case, uh, especially here on this stream where we just have a lot of large and older individuals and no recruitment occurring. So we've got one one age class or size class here in this population. So slowly, without any type of work or augmentation, this population could be lost. As a group between TWRA, TSU, and um, the Nashville Zoo have been working with them to raise these animals up. The Nashville Zoo has been keeping them, keeping them fed for about six years, and we have animals that are up, about six years old now that are ready for, for for release. And so we're trying to do a basically a um, augment, population augmentation using zoo raised hellbenders and putting them back into the watershed in which which they would have occurred naturally. We've actually done a lot of a lot of work to make sure these animals have kind of a as good of a of a, an experience once they enter them in the habitat as possible. Well, I've been helping transport water and crayfish to the hellbenders weekly. So we've been doing water changes in their in their system with that water once a week. Yeah, so we've been getting it uh, once a week now for last month or two months. So they've already been exposed to hopefully what's in this water. Crayfish collection is, is introduced the hellbenders that have been reared on fish and mealworms for the last five years to a more natural uh, prey item. But most of the time they're just called bender boxes. Um, they're just artificial habitat, that, but it also makes it easier for us to monitor the animals. We can just open the lid um, and then check to see if they're in there, and then we can uh, uh, do just a visual health exam to see if they're healthy, um, and then do disease samples if we need to. We're uh, putting the boxes in there as kind of almost uh, kind of connection habitat, so the animals, if they don't, if they don't really take to the cover sites where we're releasing them, the boxes provide an, an additional refuge site where they can go to. And ideally, it would be great if we could find a nest in the in those uh, nest boxes come uh, breeding season, which is August and September. But for just if they don't use it for for nesting, it provides a nice kind of connection and also sort of a sort of a stationary place where they can sit for a bit and maybe find refuge in between the rocks. There's a myriad of reasons why potentially folks think hellbenders are declining and all probably play a role, but you know, in kind of our, our opinion of the collective group here in Tennessee, we think that uh, disturbance of the watershed and erosion and sedimentation are the major issue. The big thing is to learn over the next year and a half, two years. So how, how do these animals habituate to the stream? Uh, what are, is there any mortality? What are the, the causes of that mortality? To see if, if this type of project can be implemented in other streams across the state. Of course, the things you worry about with animals that are raised in captivity is do they know how to act as a hellbender? And so there's going to be probably a couple weeks where they're going to have to make some changes in how they respond to predators and what cover rocks they go underneath of and how they respond to food cues and things like that. And so we're going to find out real soon if these animals know how to be hellbenders. It's been months and years of work for some people, so to finally see these animals being released was, was a little tricky because they were ready to go, but it was very exciting. 
And so the idea is that if even if we don't get to jumpstart breeding, we'll actually just provide some more animals into the population to potentially keep this population going until we can maybe do some habitat augmentation or some other things to, to kind of trigger, you know, population growth in the stream. I'm really lucky that we do get to see the non-game side of things. Um, and not only do we get to see the animals, but hopefully our data is helping, like I said, those animals or the population sustain and continue on instead of just seeing them. That does mean a lot to me. That's why I do what I do. Um, it's, it's really nice when we were releasing them. They, they swam into their holes and they disappeared like they knew what they were doing. Um, so that's great. Um, but yeah, I've been feeding and caring for them for six years now, so it's, uh, it's a little bittersweet. But hopefully they're going to uh, have more babies and do what they need to do and we're just going to thrive. I, I think to, to kind of term this as a success is we actually see one of our animals that we've raised the zoo, put in the stream, actually breeds successfully in the stream. We can see that these animals are actually breeding successfully, laying nests, guarding nests, hatching out young and those young dispersing into the habitat. That's a, that's a great success.